Since about 2002, we started performing facelift surgery a little bit differently. It combines the best of mini facelifting with traditional facelifting. So patients come in and we give them a cocktail. We give them some medication, some Valium and some other oral medications, meaning we don't need to perform this under IV sedation and you don't need to be intubated. We don't need to paralyze you and perform this under general anesthesia. What we do is we mark where we're going to make some incisions and the markings are going to be made inside this bump on the ear called the tragus. There's a marking. It comes right around the lobule or the earlobe and about one or two centimeters on the back of the ear. No longer are we making incisions all the way up the ear or all the way down the back of the scalp the way we used to. There also is a little incision at the root of the ear. It comes right out of the tragus and uh, there might be a little incision here. What we do then is patients are relaxed, we come back to our operating room and we begin to localize the patient. And what, uh, what that means is we'll go ahead and inject some local anesthesia. Much like if you had a mole or a skin cancer, we would numb that up. But this is the worst part of the procedure and it's not very bad. It's really just like numbing up a little mole or a little skin cancer that you might have. Once things are localized well, I'll come back, we'll make the previously marked incision, and I'll go ahead and explain what we're doing. We'll make our incision, we're going to elevate the skin, and beneath the skin there's a layer called the SMAS, the Submuscular Aponeurotic System. It's an acronym, and the best way to think about this is if you have a boneless chicken breast, there's a white tough layer of, o over that uh, chicken breast, very similar to the layer that we're supporting. It's not actually muscle, but it's a fibrous layer that has begun to descend over time. As that SMAS layer descends over time, we begin to develop folds, jowl, jawline, and neck problems. So our job is to resupport, to resuspend that SMAS muscle, and we do that using absorbable sutures. At that point, we have the SMAS tightened, and this represents a lot of leftover or extra skin. We'll simply remove that skin and use some very fine sutures to close the incision. The reason why I'm pointing out this particular feature is because what we don't want to do is we don't want to come in and just simply pull the skin. This is often the case in procedures that you might know as the lifestyle lift or other skin only mini facelifting procedures. Our job is to actually support the underlying SMAS to fix the problem one, so that the procedure is lasting. Typically these procedures last about seven to 12 years. And two, so that you look natural and not pulled. So we'll perform that on one side, we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Sometimes in the neck area, you'll see patients have these little bands. And what the bands represent, there is a muscle called the platysma muscle. We have a muscle that generally joins in the midline, joins in the middle portion of the neck, and the connection is very attenuated. That means that it's very weakened and often it separates. And as it separates, we can see the edges of those muscles and we call that banding. So what we might do is make a little incision under here, find the right and the left platysma muscle and simply suture them back together. That typically is performed at the beginning of the procedure so that we're actually fixing the problem. So as we tighten the SMAS to the right and the left, we've actually uh, completed the, the neck repair uh, better. A lot of patients uh, do ask, you know, oh my gosh, am I going to be awake during this procedure? And the truth of the matter is we've been performing the advanced facelifting procedure this way since about 2002. Patients do remarkably well. Most patients are nervous. I would be nervous if I were having some facial procedure. But the cocktail, the medication that we give you orally, relaxes you uh, very well. After we get things localized and you're numbed up, and once we begin the procedure, you do realize that you don't feel anything. You might hear some noises. We play some nice music for you. If you'd like to have a conversation with us, we'll talk. But generally after about 15 minutes or so, most patients fall asleep naturally by themselves and they're comfortable throughout the procedure. One of the benefits of using our cocktail and, and performing this under local anesthesia are uh, the biggest advantage is that there's no risk. We don't have the risks that general anesthetic agents pose. And of course, with most surgery, the risks that we always talk about, having lung problems or cardiac problems, have to do with the anesthesia uh, itself. In addition, certain general anesthetic agents can actually cause what we call vasodilation. What does that mean? That means that 
some of the medications that we take can expand the blood vessels a little bit or create more blood flow. That could create additional bleeding, potential for the use, the need for tubes and drains, and, uh, and an extended recovery period. When we use local anesthesia well, what we're doing is we're creating vasoconstriction, just the opposite. That means that the lidocaine, which numbs the tissue, contains epinephrine. And epinephrine, you might know as adrenaline, is a, a, is a substance that will actually constrict blood vessels. So for example, if you had a molar skin cancer and we injected it, and let's say it's right here, you will actually see the tissue begin to blanch. It will turn white. And what's happening is the epinephrine is constricting that blood vessel. There's less blood flowing to the tissue. And now during the procedure, we lose very little blood. In fact, we may lose only several teaspoons of blood during this entire operation. The benefit of minimal blood loss is that we can move from one step to the next. We can go ahead and do our job and get you to the recovery period. The recovery period uh, after an advanced lifting procedure is remarkably fast. Patients actually look quite good the next day, typically with very little bruising. Immediately following the advanced lifting procedure, we do use a dressing. We place a dressing around your head. Most patients find this somewhat comforting. They expect after having surgery that they have something. The truth of the matter is, we like to put it on because you're going to go home, you're going to want to inspect everything, and frankly, it's easier if you go home, just rest, you might take Tylenol, you might take a half of a Vicodin, you really won't have much discomfort or pain, and the next day we'll see you back, We'll take the dressing off and you will be shocked. You'll be surprised. You'll have a nice clean jawline. Your neck will be improved. This is surgery. You will look a little bit like a chipmunk. You're going to have some swelling, but typically very little bruising. Generally, about five or six days after that appointment, you'll come back and we'll remove those dissolvable sutures that we placed. If you've taken any medication overnight, you probably want somebody driving you back to the office. We'll unveil you, we'll take the dressing off, and uh, following that appointment, you can go home, uh, shower, shampoo, and go for a walk if you like. This is surgery. I don't want to minimize it too much. We don't quite have a magic wand yet, but you look quite good. And most women who have hair can sort of cover that area of swelling quite nicely the next day. Yeah. One of the questions that uh, I'm asked a lot is, is, why does this procedure only take 45 to 50 minutes? And the truth is the entire procedure, you're with us probably for about three hours. You'll come in, we spend more time preparing for the surgery. And that is, it takes us a little bit longer to mark things and localize the area. We probably spend about 15 to 20 minutes just doing that. Then we'll wait about 10 minutes before we get started. However, because of the care that we've taken on the front end and the fact that we localize the tissue well and we don't have bleeding we can move from step to step and the procedure takes about 45 to 50 minutes typically. Um, patients will sometimes wonder whether or not we're taking any shortcuts with our surgery and what I'd like to reiterate again is that we are performing a SMAS facelifting procedure and as I described before it's making sure that that underlying fibrous layer that SMAS layer is supported properly that will give you a natural result and will give you a long-lasting result. The other aspects of the advanced facelifting procedure are what you might deem mini-lifting, that is, performed under local anesthesia, shorter incisions, uh, less surgical time, and a shorter recovery time. And uh, as mentioned, we've been performing it this way since about 2002. The patients that we see, and I would suspect most patients undergoing these sorts of treatments, are interested in a natural look. If we go back and walk through step by step in terms of how we are performing these treatments, by supporting the underlying SMAS layer, it allows us not to put too much tension on the skin, therefore looking unnatural. There's nothing wrong with loving in West Palm Beach. But if you go down to Florida, West Palm, you probably will see a lot of faces that look pulled and stretched and windblown. And that's because their tissue has lost elasticity and the surgeon has tightened the skin. There's too much tension on the skin and or they have not supported the SMAS properly. When patients come to see us, 
the general goal is to look more refreshed and rejuvenated. Uh, pa patients specifically don't like their jowls or they don't like the folds or they don't like the neck tissue hanging down. Typically, we're not trying to make patients look different. We're trying to make them look more youthful and we're trying to make them look more refreshed. And the way that we achieve this, and I absolutely promise and guarantee our patients this, is that if you understand what we're doing by here's the skin, here's the SMAS layer, if we're supporting the underlying SMAS properly, you will look natural, you will not look overdone. We support the SMAS as well as we can. The overdone appearance comes if we're trying to pull or put too much tension on the skin, which we won't do. For the average patient having an advanced facelifting procedure performed, uh, we typically remove the sutures on day six or seven, and most patients at that point who are going to work can go to work. They we find that patients who've undergone the advanced facelifting procedure are happy. Patients are very satisfied, not just with the outcome, but with the overall experience. Patients come in concerned about the fact that this is going to be performed under local anesthesia. They're not sure what that means. But most patients end up falling asleep. Patients love the fact that they're treated. The procedure takes under an hour typically and that their recovery is much faster. There's typically very little bruising. They're back to work. They're back to their life faster. They're back to activities and uh, working out much, much sooner. And um, I think that patients are really thrilled that this is an option for them. Many of our patients are concerned of the risks of undergoing an elective procedure and the risks associated with general anesthesia, especially because a lot of our patients are right around 50, 45 to 55 years old. That means they typically have kids at home and they, there's some guilt associated sometimes with undergoing these procedures and taking care of ourselves. The advanced facelifting procedure is a wonderful opportunity for these patients to undergo a safe procedure that's effective and yields a wonderful outcome. So our facility is really designed with the patient in mind and besides the fact that we are an accredited surgery center and we do things safely, we also recognize that privacy is a major concern for some patients. Following the procedure, patients sometimes are coming in with their dressings on the next day and we do have a post-operative waiting room. We're not waiting though. You're walking in the door and you're immediately being escorted to the treatment room where we can go ahead and take care of you. So privacy is of utmost concern to us because it's important to you. So many patients are also concerned about leaving the center the day of their procedure. And uh, so we move from the operating room and you are escorted via one of our nurses out a separate exit so that you don't need to run into anybody in the office or any patients that might be coming into the office who might be your neighbor. Whether or not you are one of our high profile patients or an average citizen, you are important to us and your privacy is something that we take very seriously. So we have ways to walk into the office and ways to exit the office so that nobody sees you. Patients who are seeking the utmost privacy in terms of coming to our facility and leaving our facility, they don't want to share things with family members or friends, we will provide a car service for those individuals to make sure that they safely arrive at the office and they arrive home safely following their procedure.